Hello, I'm Richard Hunter, Head of Markets, and welcome to our look ahead for the week commencing the 3rd of July which of course heralds the end of the quarter and indeed the half year where markets have been surprisingly resilient given some of the challenges that it's had. Of course we had the banking turmoil uh, a few months past we, which has now been undone by the strength of US banks uh, after their annual stress test. We've also of course had the ongoing debate around inflation and rising interest rates um, in, in, that, in an effort to combat that inflation, although certainly, again, in terms of the US, the economy does currently seem to be robust enough to withstand what could be another further two rises. The standout's probably been the mega cap stocks in the States, particularly big tech, uh, and latterly boosted by the excitement on prospects for what financial benefits artificial intelligence could bring. So, in the year to date, the Dow Jones is uh, currently up by 3%. The S&P 500 is up by 14.5%. The Nasdaq is up by 30%. And the FTSE 100, certainly uh, off its record highs in February, has managed a gain of just 0.7% in the year to date. Turning to next week, there's a few re retailers to keep an eye out for. First of all, we're expecting first quarter numbers from Sainsbury. These shares have had a fairly good year, up around 31% over the last year. Although, to put that into context, if you go back two years, the shares are down 1%. So, uh, it's been some something of a uh, in catch-up mode. As usual, for a trading update, lots of things to look out for for Sainsbury's. It's performance in grocery general merchandising, particularly of course Argos, how it's needed to pass on some of the price increases and how that's Im impacted on volumes and of course what impact it might also have had on margins. In the meantime there's a fairly decent dividend yield of 4.9% in the background. Also full year numbers are due from Curry's Less of a positive performance over the last year. The shares are down by 22%. Number of reasons for that. Although the numbers at the full year are likely to be reasonably promising, UK sales last time we heard were on a like-for-like -like basis down around 7%. And the Nordics region has been subject to heavy discounting. And Nordics does impact curries. It accounts for about 40% of group revenues. But the uh, current consensus is that pre-tax profits should should come in somewhere between 110 and 120 million pounds. Finally, also full year numbers from AO World. Uh, shares up about 20% over the last year. Uh, a well received decision from the company to exit Germany and concentrate on the UK. In fact, if you compare uh, UK growth, last time we heard from AO World, it's up about 30, 36% versus. Um, pre-pandemic levels. There's also a number of ancillary services that's introduced such as the installation of new products and indeed the recycling of old products. It's also worth looking out uh, to see whether net debt has continued to fall. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.